Any scientist won't think twice about telling you that a parasite under a microscope looks exactly like you imagine the monster under your bed to look like when you were a child. Join us as we have a look at some scary parasites you may have right now. Vandalia serhosa. They swim in the Amazon basin, and their average size is typically 7 inches. These parasites like to catch a wave on a larger fish by attaching to their gills and then feeding on their blood like tiny little blood-sucking vampires. The relationship between the two is entirely one-sided, since only the parasite reaps any kind of benefit, and the poor host fish, well, it's left in complete and utter misery. Apparently, though, the tiny parasitic catfish has developed quite the bad reputation among humans, as it has found its way into our world by attaching itself to the urethra of males. These stories go way back, even into the 19th century, and still continue on today. Most of the stories have become speculation since there's still not any kind of scientific evidence to prove otherwise. However, we can't deny that the claims are completely false. And if you've been swimming in the Amazon basin, we hope that you've never had to experience what we can only imagine would be the worst pain ever. The Tapeworm An 8-year-old girl from Taiwan would end up having an 8-foot-long tapeworm removed from her body after eating contaminated sashimi. The tapeworm was reportedly still alive and had lived inside the girl for at least a month. People can contract tapeworms from a variety of sources, which include raw contaminated fish, beef, or pork. And if the fish is infected with the worm in its larvae stage and then eaten raw, the tapeworm can pass on and live inside the human once it's been ingested. Of course, we're not exactly telling you to steer clear of that rare steak or the raw sushi, but you might want to think twice before you take that bite because of an 8-foot tapeworm. It doesn't exactly sound like a walk in the park to remove. Wusheraria bancrofti now, if you haven't heard about the story of Nyan Tu, the bear, and his swollen tongue, then you'll have to hear it now. Nyan was captured alongside his brother by poachers in China. However, due to some heroic monks in Myanmar, the bears would be rescued from being sold illegally in the bile industry. The illegal bear bile industry in China consists of bears that are held in captivity to harvest their bile, which is then used in traditional Chinese medicinal medicine. However, the monks would soon discover, after the rescues, that Nyan the bear was not exactly in a healthy state. His tongue quickly began to swell, and surgeons later had to remove parts of it, but the tongue kept on growing and growing until the bear was forced to drag his own tongue around on the floor behind him. A team of veterinarian experts were then flown in and would end up having to remove the tongue tissue, which equaled up to 6.6 .6 pounds. And that's when they would discover that Nyan had elephantitis associated from a parasite. The most bizarre part? Elephantitis is usually characterized as a human disease. And it's brought on by an infection from nematode worms, which are carried by mosquitoes that are found in Africa, Central and South America, South Asia, and the Pacific Islands. If an infected mosquito bites a human, they will then transmit the worm larvae into the person's blood and this will serve as their home for the next four to about six years. The worms? Well, they then begin to multiply, clogging up the body's passageways and blocking the lymphatic system, and that's going to cause you some major problems. It's also going to cause the worms to get stuck and lead up to fluid buildup in parts of the body, which usually consists of the legs and even oftentimes the genitalia. This affliction affects about 120 million people worldwide and causes significant disability along with interference to these individuals' ability to take part in society. Flukes Flukes don't exactly have any real preference on who they'll attach to, and they can even attack multiple hosts. These hosts can then include fish, frogs, turtles, domestic animals, and of course, humans. There are specifically two types of flukes that humans have to watch out for, the oriental blood fluke and the urinary blood fluke. 
They have infected millions of people, particularly in Africa and East Asia. So if you're traveling or even live in these areas, watch out for the symptoms that are associated with them. The urinary blood flute can live in the veins of the urinary bladder, commonly found in Africa, Southern Europe, and the Middle East. The eggs will then be laid in the vein of a snail, which can then break through the vein wall into the bladder. The larva then makes its way into the human body through the skin or the mouth. The next fluke to watch out for is the Oriental Blood Fluke, which can be found in China, Japan, Taiwan, and the East Indies, along with the Philippine Islands. They also attack vertebrates other than man, and can be found in the small intestines where some eggs will be carried into the bloodstream to various organs, causing a variety of symptoms which may include an enlarged liver. Human hosts can even die from extremely severe infestations. Loa Loa, or Worm Worm as it's translated, is commonly found in Africa, mostly inhabiting rainforests in West Africa. This parasite's been plaguing Africa for a really long time and comes from either a deer or a mango fly bite, which increases during the day and in the rainy seasons. Once the Loa Loa has matured fully, it wriggles out of the eye and then spreads throughout the body. Although they do look quite terrifying, they're not life-threatening. If people have a large number of these infesting into their body and take the anti-parasitic drug, then they can actually suffer brain damage within days. This major side effect is precisely the reason that it's actually stopped the drug in its tracks, and it puts any effective aid aside, which then puts countless people at risk for blindness and disability. However, the parasite may have actually met its match thanks to a group of engineers at the University of California, Berkeley. They've developed a way of detecting high levels of the worm in people with a cell phone app. Before the app's creation, it was actually hard to document if people actually had the parasite, and technicians would have to make a blood smear on a glass slide, stain the sample to highlight the worms, and then manually count them under a microscope. Hookworms and Other Associated Worms The hookworm eggs occur in the stool of infected people and then can end up in the environment where they hatch into worms, and those worms can often penetrate into the skin of people walking around barefoot. In 2015, the hookworm would infect about 428 million people, and the infections are possible in anyone from children and adults to even pets. Now, the hookworm is rarely fatal, but it will result in the following symptoms. Intestinal inflammation, iron deficiency anema, protein deficiency, coughing, chest pain, wheezing, fever, indigestion, nausea, vomiting, constipation, and diarrhea. You may also develop an extremely itchy rash at the entry point of the hookworm, but symptoms vary from person to person. The only way to actually know if you've contracted the hookworm is by technicians checking a stool sample. That makes it extremely important to remember to deworm your pets and wear a pair of shoes in warm climates where the soil could be contaminated. The Human Botfly The human botfly is native to the Americas ranging from southeastern Mexico to northern Argentina, Chile, and Uruguay. Some cases have even been reported in Europe, although they're a lot more rare. The fly eggs have been shown to take over 40 different species of mosquitoes and one type of tick. The female captures the mosquito or the tick and attaches its eggs to its body and then lets it go. You know what they say, if you love something, set it free? But in this case, setting it free may cause more damage than good. That's because after the eggs hatch, the larvae then drop into the area where the mosquito has bitten a human and make their new home inside of a human host. One couple would discover just how dangerous botflies can be after they were vacationing in Bolivia. The two had noticed sores developing all over their bodies, and they believed them to be of an infected mosquito bite, until the wounds then began moving around. They quickly rushed to a doctor in Bolivia, discovering that they were experiencing a botfly invasion into their bodies. It does sound kind of like a creepy sci-fi film premise, but these things actually happen. And they happen if you don't use the right precautions when exploring exotic locations. So just remember, if you're traveling in Central or South America, be sure to wear long sleeves and apply plenty of bug repellent because botfly extraction from the body is incredibly painful 
and it also has to be done with tremendous care to make sure that the entire parasite is removed in one piece and no infection occurs. The Guinea Worm The Guinea Worm happens in parts of Africa where drinking water becomes contaminated by water fleas, and when the water doesn't get filtered properly or people drink it straight from the source, they can then become infected with Guinea Worm larvae. It does take about a year for a person to develop any kind of symptoms, which results after the female worm forms a blister in the skin, and then after that, the worm will emerge from the skin. At this time, it's going to become difficult to work, but it's uncommon for the disease to cause death. Thankfully, however, there has been a lot of new strategies to stop the guinea worm from contaminating water sources. In 1986, there were about 3.5 million cases of the guinea worm spacing out over about 20 endemic nations. Then in 1989, these nations would report just 180,000 cases. Today though, that number of cases has been reduced by over 99.999%, though it does still occur from time to time. Sometimes the things you need to worry about aren't exactly on the news or even residing in the local prison. Sometimes they're crawling around your home. Join us as we have a look at some of the most deadly bugs in existence. Killer Bees Now, appropriately named, these bees, also known as Africanized honeybees, can take down a human. The killer bee is named as being one of the most aggressive and dominant insects on the entire planet. 